good morning good afternoon uh, my name is raghav gupta i am the managing director of coursera uh, in india and asia pacific uh, i am based out of new delhi um, i was saying to some of you earlier who joined us right at the start that this is a round table discussion uh, on the topic around employability uh, of students and uh, i'll shortly uh, set the agenda a little bit and get the conversation uh, started um for those who are joining us now i uh, would request you to share uh, your introduction in the chat so your name your title your institution and the city that you're joining us from uh, would be great um i'm going to bring up one slide and set the agenda for how we are going to run this round table conversation uh, i have a very short presentation i'm going to invite most of you to do the talking uh, today and i'm going to facilitate it yeah let's go into present mode please thank you so we are going to be talking about bridging the employability gap in higher education and uh, you know we're going to be talking about how uh, embedding skills in curricula is important from a graduate employment standpoint uh, that's the broad theme of our round table today and we've broken up this conversation into three parts which i'll share with you on the next slide um so the way we were planning this is you know we'll break this up into three parts the conversation uh, firstly how do we want to think about getting comprehensive job and skill insights uh, broadly spend the first 20 odd minutes on this particular topic specifically and then second how do we keep curricula updated and how do we develop faculty which you know both of them are big topics and we'll spend the next 30 minutes or so uh, on this and then time permitting uh, how to leverage industry partnerships we'll go through that as well uh, the the way we'll do this is on each of these topics i'll set a little bit of context using some slides that i have and then i'll open it up and i'll come to each one of you and ask you a question uh, given the number of people we have uh, for each topic i might not be able to come to everybody but we'd love to get your inputs on each of these questions that i will pose and we will put notes together and then we will share those out and what the learnings for each of these topics are going to be um, so with that in mind let me jump in and uh, set a little bit of context over the next five minutes or so so firstly i want to share that when we talk about employability and employment for our graduates it's helpful to start with what's happening in industry and you know the world economic forum and other industry bodies have been talking a lot about how industry is facing double disruption and World Economic Forum very specifically has been saying that automation was already happening in industry. COVID-19 has come in and because of that double disruption has happened. And specifically, this has meant four large themes that we are seeing in industry around us. And you see in the headline that because industry is impacted, graduates are also going to face this double disruption as they get ready for careers and for their future in the industry. So one the World Economic Forum is telling us that there will be lesser jobs available in the future for graduates. Second, 40% of industries expecting core skills will change and we'll talk a little bit about what these skills uh, might look like. But 40% of industries telling us that the core skills that are needed for work are changing. Third, uh, you know, COVID will go away at some stage, but a lot of organizations are planning to continue work from home even after that so some amount of work will go back into offices some amount of work will permanently stay uh, as work from home or remote and then not just us businesses but i would say all businesses you know in india in other parts of asia in malaysia are digitalizing faster businesses are becoming digital and so we are seeing this as the theme that is impacting industry this theme is impacting higher education and graduates as well as we go forward and we'll use some of this commentary as we get into this conversation on the next slide we'll see that many organizations many research is telling us that you know this point that uh, graduate employment is going to be a challenge is being seen in many parts of the world this is uh, a, a, a news item from the world wall street journal for the us which talks about how hiring for entry-level graduate positions has fallen by 45% in the US. We are seeing this in other parts of the world as well. 
and i think it is very topical for us to be discussing about graduate employment and graduate employability as a part of this particular round table that all of us uh, are on and also uh, on the next slide uh, you know we're also finding and this is i would you know uh, confess this is not a slide most higher education leaders like but this is what we're hearing from a lot of industry leaders industry leaders are telling us that there is increasingly a focus on skills and there is a little bit of a reduction in focus on degrees i would still confess that this is more talk as opposed to actual action so far but you'll see statistics here from a wiley research and from a northeastern university research which says many companies 62% are considering a skills first hiring as a priority and many are saying that as long as candidates have validated their uh, knowledge using a certificate or a digital badge or they've taken courses they would give value to that and they are okay you know to not give enough value to a degree controversial point happy to kind of hear thoughts and hear comments around this as well but this is something that we are actively hearing from industry and then even yeah. on the next slide uh, professor rajit may i request you to mute uh, please uh, professor rajit may i request you to mute uh, please thank you and sorry 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 no sorry, problem yeah. at all and we are also hearing from industry leaders like the apple ceo about how because the future of work has changed quite rapidly the skills coming out of colleges are not necessarily fully aligned with what the future of work might look like and again it just points to the topical nature of the conversation that we're going to have uh, today now if we were to break this down this high level message that skills are changing uh, these are some of the specific roles that we are seeing uh, that are evolving in industry so world economic forum says the top 5 jobs on the left you know data ai ml uh digital marketing process automation these are some of the top jobs that uh the world economic forum estimates and then microsoft research says a lot of digital job capacity is coming up you know on one side i spoke about how 80 million job losses are expected in 2025 but on the right you are seeing 149 new jobs by 2025 and a lot of these are coming up with digital as the theme so cyber security data analytics cloud software development and so on and so forth and if i were to take this and distill this down into actual career paths that we are seeing becoming relevant for students on the next slide this is a little bit of what it might look like that we'll see on the next slide now this is an example for engineering students we also took an example for science students and you know computer science to an extent is well understood sir so there are career paths in ai cyber security and so on but even in disciplines like mechanical engineering you know career paths around additive manufacturing around automation advanced materials is some of what we are seeing coming from industry and then in the sciences you know biotechnology looking at uh, jobs in bioinformatics uh, medical device innovation clinical data science and so on are some of the career paths that we are seeing as well now i'm going to share out a research piece that we've been doing at coursera which kind of brings a lot of this together so annually for the last 3 years we've been releasing the global skills report and what this report does is it looks at the activity of 80 million plus learners on the coursera platform and then it puts out research across 100 plus countries to say what are some of the essential skills across business technology data science that the industry is asking for that learners are coming and learning on the coursera platform and also what are the skills of the future and what are some of the resilient career pathways and we'll share some of this out in the chat at a later stage but this is something that uh is coming out from our research uh, as well and i'll i'll go to one last slide and then i'll pause and open it up to our discussion uh we looked at the coursera platform and we said what are students learning on the coursera platform you know if you're out of these 80 odd million people on the coursera platform if you're a student what are you learning and on the left you'll see the top trending skills that students are learning on the coursera platform so uh, artificial neural networks is a part of ai digital marketing blockchain python and so on and then on the right are examples of some of the courses that students are taking uh, around the world so google cloud python programming data science python and so on and the reason i wanted to put this up is this aligns with some of what i've been sharing which is that a lot of jobs that we are seeing coming up are around the digital space around uh, new technologies around uh, data science and so on and so forth and that's what a lot of individuals and students are coming to the coursera platform 
and uh, they are taking. So with that as context, uh, and hopefully this you know gets some of your uh, thought process going as well, and it opens up the context as well. Um, I'm going to pose a couple of questions uh, for our discussion. Uh, Aditya, just bring up uh, slide 11 once again so that we can share that. Um, so these are the two questions that we'd like to discuss. Uh, firstly, you know, we've been hearing from university and higher education leaders that it is a challenge to get meaningful job and skill insights. There is a lot of anecdotal data that is available, but to get a comprehensive point of view sometimes is a challenge. And we'd love to you know, learn from each other and ask you, what are, uh, how are you getting jobs and skills insights? And in this process, what are some of the challenges uh, that, you, that you face? Maybe I could request uh, Dr. Sojan Lal to get us started. And I'd love to come to Professor Ajit after that, and then we can go to some of the others. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to request for two, three minute uh, comments and answers and sharing of your thoughts so that we are able to cover as many people uh, as we can in this conversation. Uh, Dr. Lal, would you like to unmute and share some of your thoughts with us? Uh, we can go off screen share so that we're able to see each other. Good morning, Mr. Rakha Gupta. Uh, nice talking to you. And a very warm good morning to the entire participants. And first of all, I'm really glad to join with this uh, program. <clears throat> and I appreciate the initiatives done by the Kosovara and the team of uh, academicians uh, over here, as well as other uh, stakeholders. And uh, coming to the point which you're talking about is uh, most is all relevant to current uh, scenario. And you are clearly marked uh, uh, the examples. And particularly when I'm focusing my notes on the career paths which you're talking about, particularly for the computer science, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil chemistry, biochemistry, technology, and all. So these are all very great things. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that as because of the computer and associated job opportunities, I believe that the message that the opportunities for every branch of engineering or science is equally there to be communicated properly. Likewise, in the electrical and EC, you have written a lot of examples. Mechanical engineering, you have written a lot of examples. Likewise, civil and other parts. And the second uh, slide also, I have seen that you are also mentioning about uh, what are the uh, courses, what is being required there. So I request you to give a sort of a linkage between the departmental opportunities with what are the courses uh, which is there for <clears throat> it's like a mapping of this. You did this course, then you'll be able to achieve. For instance, if you say the robotics and mechanics, mechatronics, what are the courses covered under uh, the Coursera platforms? Or maybe the other one is advanced materials. What are the courses which you are covered? So that is a very simple uh, fact, which I would like to get into that. As an educationalist, as being uh, leading the organization, I wanted to go back and convince the people that this is how it has been said. And this is a very simple example. I just wanted to tell you and uh, respecting that time and uh, you are doing a wonderful job in the currently in the pandemic. And also you said about Thank even you. after the COVID is settled down, uh, uh, things will be in favor of the digital media. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Uh, Professor Ajit, I believe we also have uh, Professor Tilak Ratni joining us. I'm not sure if I see him here. He was, he was there in the first session. Uh, probably has another meeting, uh, I think, uh, now. He all was right. there in the um, first, first session, uh, previous session. All right, you. got it. Yeah, so Professor Rajit, let me come to you next. And I know you've introduced yourself in the chat, but would love to just request you to uh, introduce yourself to uh, uh, all of us once again. And yeah. specifically my question that as we what are, how are you approaching getting insights into jobs of the future? And what challenges are you facing in getting these insights? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm Ajit uh, Madhura Peruma, I come from the Open University of Sri Lanka. And our involvement with Coursera is uh, on our IT degree program, where we wanted to uh, 
leverage on the large number of uh, internationally qualified courses that Coursera has. And uh, yeah, one of, one of the key problems that we have even in, in Sri Lanka, I think it's uh, common in many areas, is the uh, job-related skills. So the, uh, from the very beginning, uh, we run our Coursera involvement. I think uh, Aditya knows that we have been uh, closely discussing with our Sri Lanka Association for Software and Service Companies, LASCOM, which is an umbrella organization. And from the very beginning, we got them involved because we didn't want to have a, a program, a academic program, where our graduates do not have the, the skills uh, that the industry is requiring. So uh, how, how do you get inside is that these people are very closely related and we actually experimented with a model where we have what we call a pair teaching where we get an industry person to come and uh, uh, be with us in our uh, academic program, academic uh, teaching. So it, it becomes like a academic past the industry experience. So it has been very successful in uh, delivering what we wanted to uh, deliver. Now, even the Coursera, uh, we, we, our, our, when, when we discuss, we have been discussing the Coursera as well, and we are planning now how, how we can bring in that industry uh, insights and industry experience into delivering Coursera courses. So we may have to have a, a, a most probably a, a layer of uh, icing on top of the Coursera courses where the industry can uh, give their input to, uh, because we are also teaching a large number on this, uh, uh, and it's a, it's a challenge itself, you know, uh, the, the large number that we are trying to admit to our program. Right. So basically, it has been fairly successful and a very uh, productive uh, discussions with the industry. We got the industry involved from the very beginning uh, to get their insights. Got it. So you're saying two things uh, that I took away. One, that you've been interfacing with industry to understand what some of their uh, requirements have been. And second, uh, of course, our partnership with OUSL is also helping in understanding what some of the industry requirements have been, and you're leveraging uh, that as well as a part of your work. Exactly. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'd love to come to Dr. Gil Santos next. Uh, if you're on, I, I, I can see that you are. Uh, from the University Laguna. Dr. Santos, are you able to unmute, possibly join on video and share your thoughts with us? And after that, maybe I can come to Professor Chandrika and then to Professor Vilahi as well. And I see a hand raised. I'll come to you as well shortly. Okay, while we wait for Professor Santos to come back on, uh, Professor Chandrika, maybe I could come to you and ask you for your uh, thoughts on the topic. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this uh, very insightful uh, discussion. Uh, I must say, I totally agree with you to that there is, there was in fact before COVID-19 also a mismatch uh, of some sorts of what we nurture and produce and what the receivers want from our outputs. Now, in terms of our links with the industry, um, uh, we are a publicly funded university. So we uh, actually were using Coursera uh, on a sort of an individual scale, particularly in the School of Computing, et cetera, but uh, not as an institution. After COVID-19 came and we were catapulted into a digital mode, uh, we used Coursera and many of we thank Coursera for having given us that uh, uh, free of charge uh, service and exposure after which many of our postgraduates I know personally have their own personal accounts and are going ahead with those, including some undergraduates, no doubt in uh, IT learning. But having said that, we have not ventured further as an institution to link up with you like Open University, simply because we have this huge uh, amount of faculty, which we had to shift gear to uh, for them themselves to learn how to adjust, adapt, as well as develop material. 
Uh, but no doubt your material comes in useful as was mentioned even in the earlier uh, session. And we have a link with the industry and particularly the employers uh, through our alumni uh, that are linking us with SLASCOM, which uh, Ajit uh, mentioned. And we have uh, come to a partnership with the alumni through them, the industry to give opportunities in career guidance and to fashion the skills appropriate to uh, the digital mode in particular. But of course, having said that, I would also like to uh, talk about, there are some areas such as say agriculture, the caregiving services, and also the school teachers that we nurture, uh, which we cannot quite digitalize totally. And I would like to highlight that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's very helpful. Uh, Professor Elahi, I'd like to come to you next. Um, and I, again, I know uh, I've requested everybody to introduce themselves in the chat, but would just request you to share with us the name of your institution and your title as well, uh, so that everybody knows the context where you're coming from. Please go ahead, Professor Elahi. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to Coursera for inviting me to this important stage for the efforts of moving forward in the education sector in this pandemic. In fact, there are a few challenges that we are facing in the field of job and skill requirements. The horizon is moving, the limits are moving. First of all, the acceptability by the industry and the employers regarding the equity about the standard of the degree who are getting the certificates during the pandemic. So you need to convince them that we are looking into this matter and we are getting the help from the people who are very much expert in this field and their standard will not go down and the subjects or the requirements that is also changing for you. The employers also have to change their mindset and they are changing, including the mindset of the UGC who is the controlling authority of the universities the pressure is more on the UGC from the private universities rather than the public universities. So it is working. And it is very important that the employers, the UGC, the universities move unitedly to face these challenges. And I hope that this unity will help all of us during this hard situation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lai. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Uh, I know you've had your hand up for a bit, uh, Professor Support. Can I come to you uh, next? You could please unmute. Uh, uh, Professor Support, uh, unmute please. And you know, if you can come on video, uh, introduce uh, yourself and share your uh, views with us, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Support from Jolanongan University. I'm currently the Dean of Faculty of Engineering at Jolanongan University. I Thank you very much for sharing with us. And I, I believe that there is no one student who can pre-learn all the skills or he or she needed for, for the industry. That, that's almost impossible for, for the whole career of, of their lives. So I think that lifelong learning will be one of the most important thing. And there, there are no one curriculum that can, can, can teach a student to be ready for all industry as well. So I think the collaboration should be one of the keywords that we can provide that those students for, for the industry. So the basic terms that we, we should do together is collaboration, either with Coursera. Coursera, of course, is a platform that, that we can use the resource of Coursera to, to provide some skill for the students in the future. But I think collaboration, cooperation with among university also one of the most important things. I think we have an abundance of resources when we're talking about university. Only in Thailand, we, I think if we could share the resources together, then we could do many, many of things and allow students to, to move along, promote student mobility. And of course, Coursera could be one, one of the most powerful platform for that. But I think I, I would like to suggest that access to Coursera should be more easier and also somehow it should be more economically to some university. 
that that will be one part of the point. Regarding the skill, I think we're talking about many, many skills, but before we can promote students to uh, have a literacy on digital or, or AI or big data, I think one of the skills that we almost never mentioned about is basic engineering, basic science and technology skills that I think before we, we, we could provide them with digital literacy, we need to provide them with basic science and technology skills that I found that we never mentioned about this. Probably we take it for granted that all university, all students have been, has been learned this, this science and technology skill. But in fact, it's it not that, that, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful. And Professor Support, so from a, a Chula Long Kong perspective in Thailand, I'm taking away three things, right? You said lifelong learning is going to be important. You also said collaboration is the key for lifelong learning, collaboration between universities, collaboration between a university and the Coursera platform. And then you also said that uh, this needs to be all done more economically as well. Specifically, that's your feedback for Coursera, which is very helpful to hear. Uh, so thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, uh, so I've got I've got about seven of uh, seven or eight of you to share your thoughts. Let's go to section two. I'm keeping an eye on the time as well, where we will focus on uh, uh, curricula updation and faculty development. Uh, so I'll set the context again. Uh, let's bring up the slide. Uh, which is slide 18, uh, sorry, slide 13, or 12, sorry. And uh, let's get into the next section and would love to in, again invite all of you to share your thoughts. I'll get us started. So we'll move into talking about how to keep curricula updated and how to develop faculty as well. Both of these are massive topics. I don't think we will do justice in the next uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so to this particular topic, but let's make an attempt. And let me share a little bit of the context from a Coursera perspective as well. So firstly, you know, as, as we've been all talking, um, we are seeing employers are seeking a lot of these new skills, you know, whether they are data skills or digital skills, and we've spoken about some of these on the right side. But if you click once again, uh, we will increasingly see that these are challenging to teach. Firstly, you know, instructors or faculty themselves need to be upskilled and reskilled to be able to teach these skills. And also traditionally, you know, many institutions have taken time to change their curricula, to redesign the curriculum. And so bringing a faster ability to be flexible on the curricular design is also important. And so in this section, we'll talk both about faculty development and we'll talk about curricular design. I'm gonna share a little bit of how we are approaching it at Coursera and then open it up to get your inputs as well. Now, this is something that informally we call the house of content at Coursera. And this is what we're doing with many of your institutions and we're doing it with institutions around the world as well. So the core of this is what you see in the middle, which is what are the four pillars, which is the core, where we're bringing content in business, in science and technology, in humanities and social sciences and other disciplines. And universities are using some of this content on the Coursera platform and blending it into the current curriculum uh, as a part of what you're doing. Increasingly, we're finding that it is very important to bring emerging skills to university students, higher education students. So there's a layer there, which is emerging technologies. An example of this is a business student might want to go and work in FinTech and he or she needs to learn blockchain and the university may or may not have faculty for blockchain and the university may say, I'll take Coursera content, which is a blockchain course from INSEAD, and I will then you know, uh, uh, make that available to the students. So there's a layer of emerging technologies, which is available here. The next layer is multidisciplinary learning. Uh, everybody fully understands the meaning and the benefit of multidisciplinary learning. We're seeing in India, for example, that the new education policy promotes multidisciplinary learning in a big way. And so how does a law student understand uh, you know, uh, emerging technologies because cybersecurity might be a topic that this particular law student wants to work in. And so multidisciplinary learning comes in. And then at the top, some career related skills, right? And this is the usual career related skills of thought leadership, of critical thinking, of problem solving, but also working in a remote environment. How does one work in a team where you have people located in different parts of the world where we are not meeting in person, 
where we are all working together. So this is the layer that we've kind of put together. And then at the bottom, you'll see upskilling faculty. So enabling faculty to also learn all of these topics, but also enabling faculty to teach in an engaging manner online, because obviously, as most of us will agree, teaching online is quite different from teaching in a class. So how does faculty learn the skills of teaching uh, successfully online? So this is kind of like the house of content that we've put together at Coursera. The way it manifests itself into a curricula, into a curriculum is the next slide. And let me take an example of an engineering program. So this is an example of a BTEC in computer science with AI specialization. And we've done similar programs for MBA students, for law students, for liberal arts students, and so on. But what you'll see here is across the eight semesters, roughly anywhere between 60 to 80% continues to be university-led, faculty-led content and 20 to 40% is blended in uh, from Coursera. So, you know, what Professor Support was talking about, so the basics topic like physics in semester one is taught by the university faculty, but introduction to electronics in semester one possibly comes from Coursera, which in this particular example is Georgia Tech. And then also an emerging skill, which is introduction to artificial intelligence coming from a company like IBM, which is a standalone course and might be blended in from the Coursera platform. And we've seen that this approach has been uh, quite helpful. And then further down, you'll also see in semester three, you know, data communication continues to be taught by faculty at the university, while a topic like machine learning might be uh, picked and blended in from the Coursera platform in this particular example coming in from Duke University. So this is an example in terms of curricular development that we've seen. And then on the next slide, let me show an example of some of what faculty are learning on the Coursera platform as well. And we looked at data around the world and we found that any person who's marked themselves as a faculty member are coming and learning these particular skills on the Coursera platform. So if the faculty is learning a topic related to business, they're learning spreadsheets, communication, project management, blockchain, and design thinking on Coursera. And if they're learning technology, then Internet of Things or you know, C programming or numerical analysis. These are the top five skills that they are learning in each of these disciplines. And then you'll see on the right, which are the top 10 courses that faculty are taking on the Coursera platform. So machine learning from Stanford at the start uh, on top or the data scientist toolbox at the bottom coming from Johns Hopkins University, which is a good sign because faculty are coming and learning the right skills and taking the right courses as far as the future of work is concerned. So that's how some of you know what we are seeing happening on the Coursera platform. Let me come to the questions that I'd like to open this up and pose to you. So firstly, you know, I would love to get your thoughts on this and maybe I could start with Professor uh, Rhonda here from Pan Pacific University, and then I'll come to the others as well. But how are you integrating job ready skills in your curricula for your institution? And then how are you investing in faculty development for job ready skills? We'd love to learn about these two topics uh, from you. Again, would request you to you know, uh, take maybe two, three minutes and share your thoughts. Uh, Professor Ronda, maybe I could come to you and then I'll come to the others as well. Uh, just confirming that you're still on. Okay, while we wait for uh, Professor Ronda, I see Professor Gill is here. Uh, I, I know I was coming to you earlier. Are you able yeah. to share your thoughts on uh, curricular design for future of work as well as faculty development for future of work? Uh, right now, these are things that are really very new to the university. Uh, I like uh, faculty development for uh, uh, online training but actually we approve uh, we there is a budget allotted before for face-to-face -face training but uh, for faculty development uh, uh, since it's online uh, we don't know how to to uh, grade it as part of their promotion Normally, mm -hmm. for faculty development, it goes with uh, if they're going to take their master's degree. So we get, uh, we we finance the 
the uh, training piece of the of the of the of our faculty and teachers uh, even non teaching actually and then uh, what we can do is we can accredit for example Coursera for uh, for one of the training programs we just need the we just need the papers from your end so that uh, once they they did their training with Coursera it will be uh, accredited for their promotion and then the other one uh, besides faculty development you were asking about yeah, I was asking, how are you thinking about incorporating a lot of the future skills related to job readiness into the curricula for students as well? Really, that's that's a good question. Right now, for example, uh, uh, we are to, uh, talking to the Department of Trade and Industry and some semiconductor companies. They need uh, IC design, IC designers. A lot of IC designers. So how can you fast track the training of IC designers? And there is a need. So I was listening in the in the seminar a while ago. Uh, in the first session, I like the word the uh, fast track uh, fast track skill sets training. But how do we so? What we can do is after the training, is how do we certify that that graduate of that online training is already capable of doing IC design, or like uh, national certification. So which means that, uh, for example, Coursera has to be accredited with our test that we call it the Technical Institute for uh, vo uh, vocational courses for non-degree, uh, especially if it is uh, 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 an important skill set like IC design, and because these are not already, uh, they are not uh, part of the, they're, they're not the traditional, traditional uh, uh, what do you call that, traditional uh, degrees. And it's already some of them are embedded in, in the ECE program or electrical engineering, but not really the the, the depth is not uh, not too too much. So that's why there should be another yes another uh, training um, online training for this kinds of uh, adaptation of uh, skill set for for job creation. Got it. Thank but you for important, sharing, Professor Santos. Important that we have a, a uh, to pass track capacity building. Got it. Thank you for sharing that, um, uh, Professor Sue Ng. Can I come to you uh, next? And my apologies if I'm uh, mispronouncing uh, your name. We'd love to get your thoughts on both faculty development and curricular design for the future of work. And quickly to introduce you, your head of school at Swinburne Sarawak in Malaysia. Please, would love to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of uh, curriculum development, right, we actually um, incorporate the graduate attributes into our degree courses. So uh, for example, well, examples of uh, graduate attributes would be like, you know, make sure the graduates have uh, possessed of uh, digital skills, critical thinking, problem solving skills, uh, teamwork, etc. Yeah. And uh, in, addi in addition to that, um, we always uh, engage um, the industry partners, uh, uh, speakers from the, uh, the employers to come in and actually uh, conduct a career talk to our students so that they understand what are the future skills uh, the employers are actually looking into. And uh, of course, we also have a regular uh, course uh, comprehensive review. So we have to review our curriculum. We have to, uh, you know, we get, uh, get the feedback from our industry partners. We have the industry partners or employers as our course advisory committee members. 
Um, and uh, in terms of developing our faculty, uh, of course, we need to ensure that we provide uh, professional development, training and development. We have a learning and teaching unit in our university to make sure our lecturers themselves are actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, upskilling themselves. Yeah. Um, so those are just some of the examples. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Professor Nilanjan, uh, if you're on, uh, let me come to you next. Uh, Professor Nilanjan is from the Integral uh, University in Lucknow, India. All right, while we wait for him, uh, is Professor Lily Chan on? And can I come to you next? I think I can see her, but maybe she's not uh, on right now. Uh, Dr. Cecile, maybe I could come to you from uh, LPU. I think I can see them, but maybe they're not able to unmute. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, hello. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, two areas that we are currently discussing uh, and would request you to just introduce yourself as well and yeah. how are you incorporating uh, jobs of the future and skills related to that in your curricula and how are you also working on faculty development? Right, right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Cecil Bing. I'm from the of the Philippines University. And um, as of the moment, we are still to, to start with uh, the programs from Coursera. Um, in our uh, curriculum, as of the moment, we have, um, of course, included uh, some courses that may lead to the development of uh, skills of a future-ready graduate. But uh, we are looking forward with our partnership with Coursera to further develop these skills of our students so that um, they will be able to achieve the graduate competencies that we would like them to be and that they will be uh, like, you know, um, readily employable worldwide. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I see Dr. Nilanjan is on. Um, let me yes, come sir. to you next, mm -hmm. Dr. Nilanjan, and would request you to introduce yourself. I, I did introduce you, but I'm going to request you to do that yourself as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rajav. It's a pleasure. Your audio is a little bit soft on our side. If I can request you to be a little louder, uh, please. Yeah, uh, it's a pleasure being on this platform today uh, from uh, participants across the world participating in this, really getting a lot of insightful uh, information. Uh, one thing that I would like to share with everybody, my name is uh, Dr. Nilanjan Mukherjee. I'm the head of uh, corporate relations, placements and international affairs at Integral University in Lucknow in India. Uh, so warm greetings to all of you. One thing that I picked up, which we also uh, are in the process of implementing at our university is the faculty industry immersion program. Where we firmly believe that uh, skills have to be upgraded all your life. And that holds true for the teachers as well. We believe in continuous education. We also believe that no degree can last you for a lifetime. So there have to be degree refresher programs if the August gathering here agrees with me. University should have a program every five years on how to upgrade your skills for even the students and the alumni. In that same light, as far as faculty development is concerned, we have a process in place which uh, feeds back into the faculty, into the departments, the contemporary skills required by the industry. For example, in India, uh, there is a lot of transformation happening in the automobile space. If I may just use an example, uh, if people are moving from diesel and petrol technology to battery technology to run vehicles, and our mechanical engineering and our related engineering departments and the teaching processes in therein have to be in tune with this. So we are kind of inputting information from the industry back into the classrooms, back into the research labs, back into the faculty domains for them to then further develop curriculum. We also have a concept called the industry council, which regularly meets, interacts, and has a faculty industry interface. Though it is still at the nascent stage, but we would love to develop that further with the help of Coursera, with the help of uh, professional institutions and partner institutions, whoever 
are on board uh, here on this uh, platform so that is that brief uh, uh, introduction that i would like to give and the perspective that i would like to give of course i am a firm believer and the university is a firm believer of cross functional learning uh, things like techno sales for example are now the buzzwords wherein an engineer also has to develop the selling skills in order to promote a, a technical product you know that is that, that is the kind of platforms that we all need to work together and i invite all our partner institutions here on this platform today to come together and do something which is for the good of all of us so that's thank it you. for me thank you very much mr raga for the opportunity thank you dr nilanjan and i think you spoke about immersion programs every 5 years and also lifelong learning which was helpful yes. to hear um we have 10 more minutes i'm going to go into our last section uh, bring up a couple of slides and then i see uh, dr tilak ratne has joined us who's the vice chancellor of open university of sri lanka would love to come to you as well and get some of your thoughts and uh, also i see professor aiva is here uh, as well would love to come to you and some of the others as well so the last section you know i think many of you have already spoken that leveraging industry partnerships is important to understand how industry is changing to also get industry to participate in uh, in some of this learning right and the way we've been thinking about this at coursera is if we think about students companies and universities as being this ecosystem that all of us are addressing and skills first hiring is what we are hearing from companies is becoming increasingly important i wanted to share out a, a quick perspective uh, if you'll click once aditya uh so one we are hearing from a lot of companies that there is a lot of cost consciousness in their hiring processes you know businesses are under pressure they're looking at reducing cost when it comes to hiring and what i mean by that is that they're not reducing starting salaries but they're saying if we can get graduates who are able to hit the ground running they need lesser on the job training it helps us get our new graduates to start being more productive faster and so we're hearing from a lot of companies that they're looking for a certain minimal proficiency level especially in digital skills data skills and so on and so we're hearing that from companies who are hiring um let's click once more now we are also seeing a number of uh, institutions are saying why don't we partner with industry directly you know so some com- institutions are partnering with organizations like IBM AWS uh, depending on which uh, discipline you are teaching you know uh, there are partnerships like this that are emerging and then we are hearing from students um, who are the you know key stakeholder here that these industry specific trainings are beneficial but by limiting this training to only one particular company it can be a little bit limited from a career standpoint especially if it one thinks about the middle uh, mid year mid term to the long term here so getting ibm specific credentials versus let's say broader cloud computing credentials which is you know not just linked to one particular company and so these are some perspectives that i think are relevant for this conversation the way we've been approaching this at coursera is we've gone out and we've got a lot of companies to create content on our platform let's skip this and let's go into the next one so what we've done over the last 2 3 years is we've gone out and we've partnered with 55 plus companies and these are leaders in technology these are leaders in digital marketing these are leaders in data science and so on so there's you know google there's uh, facebook there is uh, salesforce there is ibm autodesk and so on and so forth and what these institutions have done is they've created 800 courses on our platform and these 800 courses and certificates have been taken by upwards of 10 million people and these are some of the examples of the professional certificates that these uh, companies have created so there are entry level certificates from you know cyber security analyst or data science analyst to social media marketing uh, certificate from facebook and similarly in uh, data analytics technology and so on and so forth and we are finding that this approach has been quite beneficial for university students as well to say along with the knowledge and the critical skills that i'm building on campus how do i also build very specific job relevant uh, skills and also gain professional certifications from uh, these institutions and that's some of the approach that we are taking what i'd like to do in the next 6 minutes that we have and we'll go to the last question on the next slide is how are you approaching this right what would a sustainable industry academia partnership look like that's what we'd love to get some uh, comments and thoughts around 
uh, we can stop screen share and over the next six minutes, maybe invite uh, two or three of you to share your thoughts. Um, Professor Thilak Ratne, would, could I come to you first, yeah, maybe, so, uh, and uh, share some of your thoughts? Yeah, so good afternoon, uh, everyone. So it's uh, very nice to meet you all. And uh, so Raji, uh, Raghav Gupta. Uh, well, uh, so, uh, well, this industry participation is, you know, uh, paramount important for, you know, that uh, finding out the, what is known as the right employment opportunity for our graduates. Because what I see in Sri Lankan economy, except, uh, of course, uh, the medicine and the engineering, the work-based training concept is, you know, that uh, newer concept. So therefore, now, uh, let's say in the perspective of Open University of Sri Lanka, so right now that we have introduced uh, very recently Bachelor of Software Engineering. So on the job training from the day one itself, that we look forward to uh, create an opportunity for our students to work with the industry and work-based assignments. So therefore that they are, uh, the, the career, the work ready, the world of work ready career will be there with the students. But for, uh, to, to propagate this concept, of course, that what we need, we need, as you very rightly said in the beginning, in the previous you know, sort of discussion, where that uh, we have to have a continuous dialogue with the you know, that industry partners. So there may be different you know, that, uh, industry advisory uh, committees, the uh, institutional level, and the second, you know, that faculty level, and third, the, the program level. So we have to have these industry advisory committees. So therefore, then the industry people, so would you know, uh, explain to our own academics how to embed set of skills that they are required to meet their, you know, that expectations. That is one. The second thing is that, like that, I would uh, let's say look forward to adopt the concept, but the you know, Toyota company is doing in Japan. So Toyota in the day one, when they you know that uh, recruit, you know, let's say if the Nagoya University is having automobile engineering or that nanotechnology engineering degree, where in the very first semester itself, they are identifying uh, through the test, the uh, a few candidates. And from the year one to year four, they are you know that working with the Toyota company and you know that I mean earn, work and learn the, the concept. So therefore that I'm really you know excited and anticipated to introduce this kind of a model to our open initiative of Sri Lanka and to benchmark whatever the best practices available in the world as well. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. And I think you said uh, get industry partnerships going early, have an industry council which advises you also and participates with you on some of these skills of the future. And then yeah. the whole uh, Toyota concept as well that you spoke about. Wonderful. Thank you for uh, sharing that. Uh, we have a couple of minutes. Uh, Ms. Ayla, if you're on, would love to come to you and hear from you from uh, a Mapua University perspective. Uh, how are you approaching this? Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Um, uh, similar to other um, uh, who have already spoken, we have been doing sim uh, same thing. So, you know, we have advisory um, council from the partner industries for us to be able to um, monitor and um, monitor and identify the employability outcomes or the graduates attribute that are needed in the industry. Uh, in terms of partnerships and how to make how to sustain this partner industry academic partnerships, we have been doing internship programs as well. And apart from that, we partner with with industry in terms of developing specialized courses. So when we talk about specialized courses, like for example, we partnered with um, .NET or Java to create a four course specialized specialization for our IT, um, IT and CS students. Similarly, we have done that with um, Floor Daniels for our engineering program. So in a way, that specialization course becomes a roster or becomes already a pool of applicants or a pool of potential um, employee, employees for 
the partner um, industry. And along the lines of um, creating pathways, you, you know very well that we have already integrated Coursera into, the, into our curriculum. And right now, what we're trying to do is to create specific pathways for industry partners that will help them you know, get the uh, a foothold of the graduates or, or the graduating students that we have. So to make, essentially to, to have the partnership as, as sustainable as it is, we have to develop um, new programs and new activities with industry partners in order to address also the needs that they have in their uh, specific operations. That's all I have to say, thank you. Wonderful, thank you for sharing that. And you know, we're, we're absolutely delighted to be partnering with your university uh, and bringing some of these job relevant uh, teaching and learning to your uh, students as well. Uh, we are at time, so I'm gonna try and close us out. Uh, my apologies, I've not been able to come to everybody. Uh, 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 time's been a little bit tight uh, through all of this, but I think in the three sections that we've covered, that as we think about employability of students while the world of work is changing very rapidly. And you know, the world of work has changed in the past as well. The difference this time is the speed at which it is changing. Uh, we've talked about how to think about what are these insights into skills and jobs of the future. Second, how to think about curricular design and faculty development. And thirdly, how to think about industry partnerships. And these could be one-on-one -on -one partnerships between a university and a company. These could also be partnerships you know, through the Coursera platform where 50, 60 companies are currently teaching and they're expanding that portfolio and bringing some of that learning opportunity to students as well as to faculty. We've taken a lot of notes from everything that you've shared with us. We'll make that into a short, uh, you know, document which kind of summarizes what some of our thoughts and learnings have been. And we will hopefully circle back and share some of those. If it is of help, the global skills report that I referred to earlier, which talks about how the world is learning on the Coursera platform. We'll share links to that as well. My sense is many of you might find that to be helpful uh, reference. Uh, thank you so much for joining and uh, hope you have a great day ahead and look forward to seeing you on some other platform. Thank you so much. We'll close out with that.